All right, so, so today I'm going to show you how to take two pinch pots and put them together to make a piece that is solid. Um, that's what we use, the method we'll use to make this rattle or shaker. It's the same method to use to make this little lidded container that opens up like this. And it's the same method you use to make this animal head. And this has something inside so it jingles as well. So I use the same method for all three of these. I'm going to put the clay out of the way right now. And we're going to start with this piece here. So this is a half a pound of clay. It's already been measured out. And this would be the amount that you need to make the rattle or the shaker. So we start by wedging your clay. For this small amount, you just want to wedge it by compacting the clay. Remember, you're not trying to flatten it out like a pancake. You're keeping it kind of in that general shape and you just keep working it together. When you wedge the clay, it gets rid of air bubbles. It compacts it. It helps it achieve a uniform consistency, which means there's no super hard spots or super soft spots, and it helps align those clay particles. Okay, so my clay is wedged. I need two separate pieces though, so I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna pinch them apart, and then I just kind of squish them together and see how it feels. They look very similar. I think this one is just slightly bigger, so I'll take a little bit off of there, and that's pretty even now. So I'm gonna set this piece aside. Generally, if I'm gonna set it aside for a few minutes, I like to just spray it so it doesn't dry out too much. And then we'll work with this piece now. So I'm gonna just re-wedge it a little bit just to compact those edges where I took it apart. Otherwise, it's ready to work. Okay, so I'm gonna work it into a ball. You can do that in your hands. You can roll it on the table. I'll generally, will kind of tap it within my hands like that. Okay, so I'm gonna poke my thumb into the middle of it. Remember, it's important to poke a hole right in the center as much as possible. If you poke the hole off to the side, you'll have a lopsided pot. What I'm trying to do is I'm gonna to try to put these two together to be a sphere or a ball shape. So what I wanna think about doing is making kind of that, that bowl shape like this, which would be half of the ball. Um, it's important when you do this, remember don't leave the bottom too thick and be careful not to pinch the rim too much. Maybe consider not even pinching on the rim until the very end, just so that it doesn't get too thick on there. I'm sorry, too thin. Okay, so that's the general shape right there. I just want it to be thinner so it gets a little larger. So I'm just gonna work around the piece. And remember when you pinch, you can pinch this way, you can kind of pinch like this, however it works. I'm kind of pulling with my thumb as I'm going to try to stretch the clay out. And I'm feeling for any thick spots and I'll pinch those just a little bit harder. So I am gonna work around the rim now. I'm not pinching it skinny, I'm just pinching it to be the same thickness as the rest of the piece. All right, feels pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that one down and I'm gonna work on the second piece. So once again, just kind of wedge it just a little bit to get it back compacted. Okay, now I'm gonna work it into a nice sphere. And now poke my thumb into it. So I turn it like that when I'm poking my thumb, trying to keep the hole as centered as possible. A lot of times students will push their thumb way in at an angle and it becomes very lopsided. Okay, so once again, turn and pinch. I remember I'm making the second half of this sphere, so I wanna keep them as much as possible the same shape and the same size. Looks pretty good. Just a little more pinching. Feels a little thick on the bottom. I'm gonna even that out. Just one last check. I'm looking for spots that are too thick that I'm trying to even up. So I'm not looking, I'm feeling. Okay, so that feels pretty good to me. Check it one more time. So the bottom one's slightly bigger, but I don't see it posing a problem at all. So I'm gonna score both pieces. And if I want this to be a rattle, something that rattles when I shake it, 
I want to add beads to it. So I take my bead shaker and I get about 10 beads and I put them inside. If I don't want it to be a rattle because it's going to be something I cut open later, then I wouldn't add the beads to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the scoring tool and I'm going to score both pieces. always have students ask are the beads gonna stick and they should not stick the beads have been pre-fired and unless you force them down into the clay they shouldn't stick you don't want to get slip all over them but if you did get some slip on them, it still shouldn't really make a huge difference so here's my slip I'm gonna take some slip out I'm gonna add slip to just one side of it Clean that off. Yeah, I'm just going to wipe off some of this extra slip that got on here, make it a little more even. And now I'm ready to put them together. So I just put these two halves together like that. Oops. Okay, so when I seal this up, what I don't want to do is I don't want to dent in any part of it because if I dent it in it's very difficult to get the dent out later on. So once you put it on there you're going to seal it up and you can use your fingers or a tool. I'm going to start with my fingers and I'll show you both methods. So just basically you're peeling one of your fingers or your thumb from one piece onto the other and it's making a seal there. Okay. Same idea with using a tool is you would just take and you're peeling it over, which like I said, you don't want to dent it in. Be conscious of not doing that. Once this is sealed up, it's like a balloon. A balloon has air in it and the air can't escape unless it finds a hole to escape through. And it, this is very similar. And uh, we'll, we'll explain more in a minute about what I mean by that. So I got that all sealed up kind of roughly. I like to get it wet now. And then when I get it wet, I'll just really kind of roll it around in my hands, working the seams. You know, you can use the tool to kind of work the seam back and forth. As you're working on the piece, the seam has a tendency to want to open up a little bit, and then you just seal it back up and keep working. All right. Okay, so that's pretty spherical right now. If I wanted this to be a ball shape, and we are going to be doing a project later where you do need to make it a sphere, um, you would use a paddle to help... Uh, really kind of refine that shape and smooth out any lumps on it. When you paddle it, you don't want it really wet. You'd like it more dry on the surface. Okay, so don't spray it anymore if you're going to paddle it. And you just work the paddle around, kind of working on the seam, working on the lumps. So if you think about a rock that's in the river that you know kind of tumbles around and tumbles around, they become more spherical over time by tumbling and you know, the rocks just keep beating on them and, and wearing them down and working them into that shape. So this is different, but yet similar. You're just kind of working around from all different spots, kind of smoothing and sealing because it's really working on you know, compacting the clay, making it stronger and kind of getting rid of all whatever problems you might have. And I just keep going back over the seam as I go, but that's pretty darn good. Um, so that's a spherical shape. Now, if I want it to be more egg shape, I could tap it more, maybe in my hands this way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squish the sides and force it to both ends. Because the air is trapped inside of it, as I squish it in one spot, the air's gotta go somewhere else, so it's gonna come out to the ends. So I'm squishing the sides. Okay, so that's much more of an egg shape there now. Now, the egg shape's not gonna stand up, so I might tap the bottom to flatten it out to make it stand up like that. And then, Use the paddle a little bit more to refine that. I could use the paddle to make it more pointy on the end, kind of whatever I wanted. Okay, so I think that's how I want it, just like that. I'm going to just turn it and flatten the bottom out a little bit better. I want to have a nice base to sit on. And I could, if I wanted, add a little something on the bottom or feet, but this one doesn't need to have that. Okay, so this has bees inside. Um, if I wanted to, I could still cut it open. I could make an animal head out of it. I could add ears and a nose, things like that. So this is the same method for making all three of those. Okay, so that's step one. We'll let this, uh, we'll wrap it up in a plastic bag and we'll let it get 
leather hard, and then we'll take it to step two.